It is indeed the 8th day of February 2022. Good morning. This is KBC News Check. Glad you could make time. My name is Ben Troy Njue. Lensa Odingo will be a sign language interpreter for this live show. And for the next two hours or so, we'll be looking at uh, what has been shaping up politics of the country. And also, we do remember on Friday, we did commemorate the World Cancer Day with the theme to closing the gap. And on that note still, the head of state uh, today will be officially launching a cancer center at the Coast Provincial General Hospital. That is also, we'll be making and we'll be shaping up our conversation in the second hour of this live show. Thank you so much for making time. Remember, you can be part of this broadcast uh, through our social media platform. We are live. And talking about politics, a lot has happened in the last couple of days. Uh, perhaps we could start with uh, yesterday's uh, president uh, launching the UHC, that is uh, uh, the, the, the universal health care. Of course, a lot of discussion around it on what uh, Kenyans are bound to benefit from. And also looking at IEBC on Sunday was the last day for the second phase of the mass voter registration. But uh, looking at the statistics, themselves. They had targeted around 4.5 million people, but they ended up with 1 million people. What are some of the problems that are, have, have cropped up in the registration exercise? The ID, young people talking about you do not have the IDs. Others talking about, I don't see the need for voting because there is no change. But we will be discussing that too as well. Plus, today is a very instrumental day, and especially for you who are you seeking an elective post if you are a civil servant? Because today is the last day that you are supposed to be working for the government beginning tomorrow, uh, 9th of February. All civil servants who want to vie for any elective positions are supposed to have resigned by end of today or by close of business today. Um, that is something also we are going to be looking at. And talking about the president, also the Jubilee Party. Uh, did uh, have a meeting at State House last week where the head of state did talk about uh, February 25th and 26th are supposed to be holding the NDG, the National Delegates Conference. And uh, there will be more or less what we would call Jubilee housekeeping. A lot of people have left. A lot of things have happened. Jubilee is uh, having a dalliance with other parties. We will also be looking at that. But uh, my panel today, uh, on my immediate left, we have Michael. Michael Mungai, who is a political economist. And uh, on my extreme left, we have Wamboi Shadrach, who is an Sandra. advocate of uh, the High Court of Kenya. Uh, perhaps to begin with uh, something that uh, also formed news yesterday, mm -hmm. where you, together with um, uh, other lawyers, including Dunstan Omari and other lawyers, you're seeking to have the, a real look at the office of the ombudsman. Kindly share, share, share something on that before we, we, we plunge into politics. Ah. We had that petition in, petition in court yesterday. Yes, yes, thank you. Why are you also given orders? Uh, thank you, Ben, for having me today. Now, uh, you will recall uh, last year there was a lot of push from uh, different petitioners who wanted the removal of the DPP from office. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Rubia happened to be one of the people who had filed seeking the removal of the DPP from his office. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's now public knowledge that uh, the court has since stopped that process. We, we are waiting for the motions to proceed. Tomorrow we'll be appearing before the learned Justice Mrima mm -hmm. for the hearing of another application. But uh, alongside that, other than uh, Mr. Rubia seeking the removal of the DPP from office, he called to question a number of uh, what he calls misdeeds that are happening or evils that are happening in the office of the Director of Public Prosecutions that will require an inquiry from the office of the Ombudsman or the office of the Administrative Justice. So that uh, some of the injustices that some of the staff are facing in the office of the ODPP are investigated with a view of uh, finding solutions for them. Some of the complaints that have arisen, uh, including uh, issues of maladministration, there are, there are issues about irregular promotions, uh, favorism in that office. So that uh, these issues were highlighted to the, to the office of the Ombudsman by Mr. Rubia with a view of provoking them to investigating the, the same. Unfortunately, since the month of November last year, 2021 to this minute this is we are we are in the second month of, of uh, the month of february 2022 mm. uh, i mean there has not been any action or communication from the office of the ombudsman 
And now that has provoked his uh, initial instructions to us mm -hmm. to move to court and seek for orders that, uh, that are called mandamas. Mm -hmm. Orders of mandamas are historical orders that are meant to force public officers to do that which they are supposed to do in law. So that if we have an, a public officer with a responsibility like the ombudsman who has the responsibility of investigating state officers and he fails to do so, the courts are there to ensure that by issuing what is called judicial review orders, which are orders that are historically, uh, you know, we, we borrowed them from the practice in America, mm -hmm. where the president was at some time uh, forced to do something by law about through the orders of the court after he had failed to do so. So that, that is basically what we have we have taken to before court. Mm -hmm. uh, the directions are yet to be issued in the matter. We will be waiting for the wisdom or Solomonic wisdom as it is mm -hmm. from our learned judges so that they can tell us what will become of the the, the liturgy, the 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 snail speed mm -hmm. in which the office of the ombudsman has resolved to addressing this issue, which, which is a, it's a, it's a public issue. I mean, if the, the director of public prosecution, Mr. Nuruddin Haji, is charged with the responsibility of uh, dispensing powers that are given by the Constitution, mm -hmm. which powers are actually borrowed from the people. Yes. So in a sense, he's exercising indirect powers from the people, mm -hmm. and he's being paid by the people. If there, there are questions as to the manner in which he's operating his office, I mean, it, it is the right thing to do mm -hmm. to ask the, the, the office of the ombudsman yes. to, to take action. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Of course, uh, we cannot talk about it uh, further <coughs> because it's a matter you've already filed in court. Indeed, indeed. But uh, still on the same light, uh, every time, every year we have an election, the economy is polarized. We are a political economist. Yes. And uh, <coughs> the EBC did talk about eight months, eight ma or nine months eight. before, eight, eight months eight, before yes. the general polls. You cannot conduct any, 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 int uh, any, any, any harambes, not even for the church or for yourself if you are vying. Hmm. But how do they even the scores? You know, we have so many people who are very rich, uh, yet uh, they don't have uh, any manifesto, but we have somebody else who have a good manifesto and a clear manifesto, but he cannot be shielded from the money laundering and the money that we're going to be seeing flying. Thank you very much, Ben, for having me today. Welcome. Uh, let me comment on that, and uh, it's a very sad state for a country as such, because um, IEBC, as it is right now. It is a work in progress. As far as money matters are concerned, trust me, it is a work in progress. Why? Because uh, the shortest way for you to get out of your money problems in Kenya, it has always been the political path. That is, once you get into politics, fishy business, black market, such things, you get a little way out of there. Uh, as far as uh, the politics and the conduction of election are concerned, I leave it to the IBC. But on money matters, I think the laws that the IBC has constituted as pertaining to each of the people who are there in the elections, they are not enough. They don't serve. They are not strong enough. Uh, sometimes people call them draconian, but then they cannot be draconian. Mm -hmm. If, for example, you look at the system in the United States of America, we are looking at somebody like Barack Obama, not to say that he did not have money for himself, mm -hmm. but then he had to raise money. And this money, once it is raised, it has a controlled way in which it is supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. Now, in Kenya, it is vice versa. The politician has the money, and he seems to be the one who is fundraising for each and every one of those. So as far as I'm concerned, I think that the IBC should come up with a system mm -hmm. of first, the kind of people who should go into politics. Mm -hmm. If they have that, then they can be able to control even the money that gets into politics. Mm -hmm. But then if you cannot be able to control the personality, mm -hmm. the questions of integrity, mm -hmm. the questions on uh, how, how uh, looking into we audit that person and look at what is the source of his wealth, mm -hmm. how has he come, why is his interest in politics, mm -hmm. then that is what even causes mm -hmm. most of the leaders who are in our country not to be able to deliver. Mm -hmm. Because it is a case of somebody buying out a seat. Mm -hmm. They have their money, mm -hmm. they give it to the people, go back, get back the money, and then it is a cycle like that one. Mm -hmm. So it is sad. It is sad, mm -hmm. and I'm calling still on the IBC. Mm -hmm to let them streamline their laws, yeah. especially on money matters. Uh, and uh, still on IEBC, and I'm quite sure now you can uh, 
uh, take a spin on this. Mm. Uh, they talk, the media reports, I remember, this is in regards to what transpired uh, a couple of uh, days ago where uh, now they, they, they're talking about there's a motion in parliament that seeks to just eradicate the, uh, the, 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 the transmission of electronic uh, transmission of results. But IBCD talk about the media reports are erroneous, of course, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, misrepresentation of the bill as tabled before parliament. The bill does not propose an amendment to section 44 of the Elections Act that provides for the deployment of an integ integrated elections management system for voter registration, voter identification, and resort transmission. This is according to uh, Gulie, who is uh, Abdi Gulie, who is the commissioner mm -hmm. of the IEBC. What exactly is contained in those laws, and why would we even go back to, to how we used to do things? Now we everything we are doing is digital. Uh, ben. There, there, there is a sense in which when you listen to our politicians, mm -hmm. you, when you listen to the IBC commissioners, when you listen to some of the elites who come to the show mm -hmm. to discuss about this election amendment acts mm -hmm. and their effects, there, there is a sense in which you will feel a lot of confusion. And uh, the, the public is actually amassed into a lot of confusion. And uh, this is the confusion that sometimes results to the throwing of the baby with the bath water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, one cannot begin this discussion if, mm -hmm. number one, you have not first read mm -hmm. the Election Amendment Act or uh, Election Amendment Bill of 2022. Mm -hmm. You can also not participate in this discussion mm -hmm. if you have not read and appreciated the Solomonic wisdom from the appellate court mm -hmm. in the minor Kiai's case. Yes. You cannot also mm -hmm. discuss on whether these amendments are justifiable, whether they are mm -hmm. a clawback to what we have, without also understanding and reading mm -hmm. the decision by Justice Chacha Muita mm -hmm. on, on the, uh, in the Katiba Institute case versus the AG of the, the year 2017. Mm -hmm. So w when, when you read these decisions, you will remember that immediately after the annulment of the elections, or the presidential elections of the year 2017, yes. on the 1st of September, by uh, Justice Maraga Emeritus mm -hmm. and the other Supreme Court judges, mm -hmm. with a dissenting opinion, of course, of Lady Justice Njoki, mm -hmm. then th there was a push from the Jubilee Party to have a, a relook at the Elections Act, mm -hmm. especially on Section 39 and Section 83 that led to the invalidation of the elections, basically because the, the, the court took the approach that it is either the qualitative or the quantitative approach that yes. you must satisfy. Mm -hmm. So once you understand that, and then you understand that there was a push in court, mm -hmm. which resulted to a judgment by Justice Chacha Muita, mm -hmm. to invalidate some of the sections, especially the amendments on section 83, and Section 8, uh, 39 mm -hmm. on the Election Amendment Act. Mm -hmm. So once you understand that and you read the, the advice that the court gave, mm -hmm. number one, you will, you will appreciate that, yes, in as much as these amendments are belated, they come very late in the day. They come, I think it's, it's a very few months to the election. Yes. In as much as they are belated in the manner they have been brought to us, mm -hmm. They, they seek to address a certain concern. But even while they seek to address this concern, they are misunderstood. They misunderstand the rationale or the decision by Justice Chacha Muita. Mm -hmm. Number one, the, the issue about the electronic transmission of the election. Yes. This, this is something that uh, forms the heart of the decision by the Court of Appeal in the minor Kiai's case. Mm -hmm. Of course, we appreciate it is important that we have uh, an electronic transmission of the election. Mm -hmm. It, 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 it uh, protects us from our ills. We, we have, as a society, we cannot even trust ourselves. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we always suspect ourselves of altering, tampering yeah. with elections because people take elections to be do or die. Mm -hmm. So the rationale behind the, the electronic transfer of the election was to help in, you know, uh, avoiding the temptation of the returning officers tinkering with the elections results. So basically it's trying to fortify the laws that are there, not trying to change anything that was already there. Y yes, you see, th th this, is, this is really the point, Ben, mm -hmm. that in as much as they, they want to do something good, mm -hmm. they are mistaken. They are mistaken because the initial amendments, what they are trying to, to, to change, number one, 
was questioned before a competent court of law. Mm -hmm. There were recommendations, mm -hmm. and there was an invalidation of those particular sections they are trying to amend. The invalidation was to the extent that some of the some of the some of the amendments were vague in nature. When you tell someone that uh, if if there is a, a difference between the the results that have been transmitted yes. and the results that have been announced at the polling station, mm -hmm. then. Th that in itself creates a confusion or a vagueness in its sense yes. because you expect what will be transmitted will be what will be announced. Mm -hmm. So you cannot tell us that after it has been transmitted and we have received, and that is what was initially announced, that we will go back again and, and, and tell the people that we, we, we are now, uh, there is a confusion between what has been transmitted yes. and what has been announced. Yes. So th that is what the court said. Th this is a vagueness. And then on the issue of uh, the, the broadcasting, the live streaming of the election that has results. That a lot of heat. Yes, it has brought a lot of heat. And mm. because largely it's because people do not understand the decision between uh, the Mainakiai, the Justice Chachamuita's decision mm. in Katiba Institute. Simplify for us. Yes. Mm. Now, to simplify it, mm. uh, and, and just to break it for the members of the public to understand, mm. the court agreed there was the importance of live streaming of election yes. results. Largely because it ensures the verifiability of the elections, it ensures the accurateness of the election, and it also ensures the transparency of the elections, which are principles mm -hmm. that you can find in Article 81 mm -hmm. and 86 of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. So, the only difficulty that the court had initially in invalidating that law that they are now seeking to amend is because the, the, the provision says, when you read further, that even after... Uh, the, the live streaming of the elections, mm -hmm. this live, the, the, the elections that have been live, the, the results that have been live streamed mm -hmm. cannot be used by the commission mm -hmm. as a basis for the tally of the results. You see, that, 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 that is, is the vague. confusion. That is vague. Eh? Yes, that, that is the confusion yes. that the court was trying to point out. Uh -huh. Because you are telling us that we should not be, we should not be trusting what, what, we, what, what, what we are seeing on the screen. Uh -huh. So what the court said is, mm -hmm we should be trusting what you are live streaming and to that extent to the extent that the law is telling us that we the commission cannot use the broadcasted or live streamed results mm -hmm. as a basis for the declaration of the winner mm -hmm. or loser then to that extent that was unconstitutional yes. so what we expected for the for these proponents of these amendments to be doing is to go and do the amendment and say that now we are we are benchmarking on the decision that was rendered by learned justice uh, chacha muita mm -hmm. and we are saying that uh, as far as the live streaming results are concerned, this one can be a basis for the declaration of the results. Because why would we be broadcasting things to the members of the public yeah, and no, yet we yes. cannot rely on yes, them? Yes, yes, so yes. to that extent, the amendment is misunderstood. Mm -hmm. it, 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 is, it is now a repetition of the illegality that was there. Mm -hmm. Then there has been also the, pro the proposition that the, the commissioner, uh, no, the chair of the commission, mm -hmm. cannot be the one who is declaring the presidential elections. That also it's it's unconstitutional in itself. Mm -hmm. You are you are telling us the mm -hmm. commission, the commission as is constituted, mm -hmm. is the one that will be charged with the responsibility of declaring the the winner or the presidential elect. Isn't it very that dangerous? That is withdrawing. That is withdrawing the powers that we have given to the, the chair of the commission. Yes. We we the commission when it comes to the presidential election, mm -hmm. must be subordinate to the direction by, by the chair. Mm -hmm. So that if Chebukati, Chebukati stands and announces that X or Y okay. is the presidential elect, we should be we should be respecting that that, that decision or yes. that declaration because but he has, uh, he yes, has be, power vested. yes because he has that power and is it very dangerous to try and amend any elections act or, or, or the IBC act mm -hmm. a few months to the election okay hold the thought talking about uh, b b b votes and you've talked about uh, transparency in uh, the voters and and votes we are joined in by Diego Ngogi Wilson who is uh, a governance expert. Uh, he's also, he has also been one of the senior county officials in the county of Daraka. You hear of Daraka, need the votes uh, that where he, he was. Uh, and uh, Ngogi, perhaps uh, you, uh, to welcome you with a spin, IEBC had targeted 4.5 million people, ended up mm -hmm. with 1 million people. You will be seeking an elective seat, and uh, some of your voters have not registered. Some have talked about I, uh, IDs. As a politician, where do you sit? Uh, thank you, Ben, and I'm sorry for coming late. Um, I want to say that um, 
the INDC has not reached the, their target simply because of two things. One, uh, Kenyans are tired of going to elections, electing their leaders, and nothing much changes. Uh, number two, I still believe the, the central government, or rather the executive, has not done enough through their systems. That is from the chief, sub-chief, and the, and the very elders. Mm -hmm. They've not done enough in terms of uh, sensitization. Mm -hmm. uh, people were not really pushed. We, <coughs> we saw some adverts on media, but I don't think that was enough because Kenya, mm -hmm. most of Kenyans actually, they are not highly connected to the media, especially the mainstream media. So I think uh, those were the two major reasons why the I IMBC did not recruit enough, but we still have time. Yes, there are some people without INDC still. I, I think the ministry in charge of that, uh, they, they are supposed to hurry up, and I hope that in the near future they are going to open up another, uh, another time for, for registration of our voters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, away from politics, that's something to commend the president yeah, for because at least a lot of people mm -hmm. at the coast will be held. But away from that, uh, IEBC, I think we, 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 we can have the statistics that they released yesterday in regards to the people who are targeted, 4.5 million people who are targeted for the second phase, <coughs> the mass voter registration. Uh, we had uh, slightly over a million and uh, Nairobi leading with slightly over 100,000. What is your take uh, regarding uh, what you saw in IEBC? Uh, Diego has mentioned something which you will uh, tell us more about, of course, because uh, a lot of people are complaining about IDs, but he brought up about a good spin that a lot of uh, young people uh, just wonder, why should I go and vote? Uh, you see the count country, only one million. 31,645 in the diaspora, 2,959 newly registered voters. Mm. Okay, thank you very much, Ben. Uh, uh, let me uh, slightly differ with uh, Mashimiwa and say mm -hmm. sometimes in an election, mm -hmm. and truth be said, if we go back and revisit our history, mm -hmm. the elections that have recorded the highest turnout <coughs> are transition elections. Mm -hmm. It is funny enough, we are in a transition election and people are not feeling the need to vote. Mm -hmm. But truth be said, you know, politics as much as uh, truth be said that people vote for leaders expecting for change, mm -hmm. I would go that with that, but then it's <coughs> a very, very minor factor. Mm -hmm. There are very key things that have played to the figures which are there. More so, if you go now to the details of region per region and the expected by the IABC. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look, one of the regions that has experienced the highest of voter apathy, you'll find that some of these regions, they have they have registered high numbers, mm -hmm. but already they have high numbers. So even if they have high numbers, the expectation is still low. You're talking about counties like Nairobi? For yes, Kenya. I'm talking about Nairobi. I'm talking about Mount Kenya region. Yes. What was expected and what is there mm -hmm. is different. Mm -hmm. Now, we have to face this as truth as it is. Mm -hmm. The elections which have been there, mm -hmm. the transition. Now, those are the figures there. Yeah. We have Nairobi, and 101. Kamenga. And bear in mind, yes. Nairobi has registered voters 2 million. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. We only have an addition of 101. Mm -hmm. Kiambu County. We have nearly one point something million yes. voters. We only have an addition of 52. Mm -hmm. You see, though they are the ones which are the top, mm -hmm. but then still, if you compare that with the percentage that was expected by the IBC, it's low. Mm -hmm. Now, what informs this is what we are coming into. Mm -hmm. Now, we have to be very specific and talk about truth as it is. Our elections are normally mobilized, as Mashimua has said, on tribal basis. We have to be very, very, very true on that. Mm -hmm. Now that the dynamics have changed, you look at 2002 and you look at 2013, mm -hmm. there was a Mount Kenya candidate in each of those elections. Mm -hmm. Right now, we don't have one. So those people from that region, much as you want to mobilize them, and then that's why I'm saying the IBC needs a voter education of people feeling mm -hmm. that when you vote, you don't vote for somebody based on the ethnicity or what. You vote for somebody because you have an interest of changing your country to a better place to live. Mm -hmm. Unless the messaging is changed, yes. these figures, mm -hmm. they will continue this way. So because you go to those people to the ground and ask the people, why is it that truth be said? Well, somebody's going to tell you, well, I don't see any change, I don't see any change. Mm -hmm. But even the basis of mobilizing people in 2013 and 2002 mm -hmm. was that we need to go rescue one of our own mm. and that was used to wind up people and they turn out in large numbers not only for registration but even in what 
in Man voting. Now, let, let, let me talk about something. These are the numbers as per the registered. We will come when the elections will be done, and now we look at voter turnout. Again, that will be a very big problem. Again, it's because of the messaging. Who do we tell our people? Why do people vote? If you were to take a random test of asking people, why would you vote in a general election? Why would you vote for a president? Why would you vote for a governor? Some people will tell you, I don't need to vote for this election because it has already been decided. Mm -hmm. Some people have already decided this election. Why would I go to vote? Somebody will tell you, I don't need to vote because things are not changing. Things are not changing. Mm -hmm. But is it true that things are not changing? Or is it that somebody has informed mm -hmm. that decision by the voter? An independent voter, mm -hmm. does he or she know why they go to a ballot and why they vote? That one, I still take it back to the IEBC mm -hmm. because it's the primary in charge of civic education. Mm -hmm. Then two, even the politicians themselves, those who are looking for these votes, on what basis mm -hmm. are they doing? Do you tell the people to turn out to register? Uh, Diego, for tell us reason? one of the uh, methods is using actually to try and mobilize people. Because Thank you. Are just seeing big billboards, uh, somebody saying register as a voter. But before, we, b before Diego, we take a spin on that. Mm. Uh, uh, Wakili, kindly, is it quite risky and dangerous to try and amend any election law, either it's the IEBC Act, or the Elections Act, or the Political Parties Act, just a few months to the general polls. Why now? Now, after the, the aftermath of the 207 elections, mm -hmm. there, there was a lot of, a uh, number of commissions that came, there was a Krigler Commission, and uh, there, there, there was a, a number of recommendations that were made, mm -hmm. including a warning uh, on the, the tinkering of the elections, of, uh, the, the election laws, months before the, the said election happens. Mm. Because when, when you have such changes, there, there is a sense in which uh, people feel like uh, th th there is a scheme, a designed scheme, an evil scheme that has been hatched somewhere and is being, uh, you know, people are trying to realize it through the amendment of laws so that we do not have a respect <coughs> for the rule of law but we have a preferred way of stealing elections or running away from responsibility or responsibilities through the rule by law mm -hmm. so that you change laws to fit certain situations. For example, you are seeing a situation where currently the law is recommending that uh, the, the, the chairperson of the IBC, mm -hmm. the chairperson of the IBC can look at the, the results that have since, uh, you know, gotten to BOMAS or the National Tallying Center. And then from the basis of the results that are there and the few that are remaining, mm -hmm. if exercising is a discretion, and of course we are looking at the voter register, so that we see that if we have 10, 10 stations mm -hmm. and out of the 10 stations we have 8 stations and Mr. Mungai is leading, Wamboi here is trailing, but uh, from, the, from the eight polling stations that he's leading mm -hmm. and the, the, the two that are yet to you know, surrender their results mm -hmm. or submit their results, then the, the commissioner, the, the, the chairperson of the commission has, has the, the discretion to announce one as a, Mr. Mungai as a presidential elect mm -hmm. bec on the basis of the results that have since come in. Mm -hmm. But you see, the amendment that is coming in is that it is removing those powers of the chairperson of the IBC to the extent that you, even as much as you see election is ju numbers mm -hmm. it's, it's just about numbers yeah. and, and numbers are just about making reasonable sense so that one plus one Mushmio will tell you is two and there is no way in as much as we disagree probably on this platform or elsewhere mm -hmm. Mushmio cannot have uh, uh, another result from one plus one is two. Yes. So that the IBC chairperson has looked at the results and told us that uh, from what we are seeing, mm -hmm. there is no likelihood that Mr. Wamboi will defeat Mr. Mungai. Yes. But now when they want to remove that, it is telling you of a sinister motive. Mm -hmm. But probably people who might have lost in the election will want... From, from what they have seen, they will want to bring, and I'm sorry to say, Adharakanivi. Yes. <laughs> they will bring Adharakanivi. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and all of a sudden, the person that was losing will be winning. Probably but, the but same now, thing that we witnessed yes. in 2007. Yes. People slept knowing Iki Kimeenda, Iki Kimechukuliwa Iki. Yes. But all of a sudden, when you're waking up in the morning, 
Tarakani the person that you had lost, yes, is all of a sudden, he's, he's the one who is winning. Uh -huh. So you, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot create sense from illogical reasoning. Mm -hmm. Let us just make laws because laws are simply mm -hmm. uh, as a result of logical reasoning. Okay. Okay. Diego, yes. uh, perhaps you can uh, dig in as well, looking at um, IEBC and uh, okay, it has been blamed for not doing enough civic education. But Mike has mentioned something quite good, is that politicians are going out there seeking votes, but don't even tell the electorate why they should be voting in the first place. Uh, ben, before even I mention on something uh, in regards to that, mm. I think I agree with the Wakiri here. Mm that uh, this emergence of changing laws a uh, few months to election mm -hmm. looks very personal. Mm -hmm. It looks like uh, selfishness. Uh, it's not about people, it's not about Kenyans, it's not about good elections, but I guess some people are just trying to mess with us. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I do not agree on a few things in regards to the change of law. Number one, I do not agree that when you lose on nominations, you cannot win in the main election. Mm -hmm. So um, we've seen many people losing during nominations, mm -hmm. going even uh, as a private candidate mm -hmm. or independent candidate, mm -hmm. and they win yes. the main elections. Mm -hmm. So uh, having people that uh, are losing on nominations not going forward, mm -hmm. it's uh, basically trying to kill democracy in a way. Uh, number two, I also don't agree that uh, during nominations, that you are the only people that are supposed to vote mm -hmm. for, for any contestant, there are people within the same party. Mm -hmm. You must be a registered member of a certain party to be able to vote uh, during nominations. I don't know, Akiri maybe is going to explain mm -hmm. us more mm -hmm. that why should that happen? Because again, every Kenyan has a right to choose. And perhaps I might not be uh, of, of Jubilee party, for example, or ODM party, but if two people contest on a certain uh, ticket. Mm -hmm. I am able to know this is better than this. Mm -hmm. So we should not discriminate on that basis. I'm mm -hmm. uh, going back to my brother. Uh, IMBC target were based on uh, statistics. Mm -hmm. uh, they know how many people are eligible for 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 uh, or rather they have reached this age mm -hmm. to get maybe a national identity card and uh, then get voting card and then vote during elections. Mm -hmm. So and the elections are not meant for only presidential candidates. Yes. They are meant from MCA go to MP, you go to all other elective leaders. Mm -hmm. And so I believe our people shouldn't be taught that you are not going for the for the uh, you are not registering as a voter just for presidential purpose. Mm -hmm. You have your uh, uh, prerogative, or rather, you have a reason why you should take a voting card to elect your local leader, the MCA, mm -hmm. the, your MP, and, and going all the way to the president. Mm -hmm. So even in the Monte Kenya region, I want to urge them that they are supposed to take the, the voting cards, register as a voter, so that they are able to elect their leaders mm -hmm. all the way to the president. But uh, the, the, some of the ways that you are using as politicians, mm -hmm. all events that you are attending, Call it uh, barrio ceremonies, call it wedding ceremonies, um, churches, because we are visiting so many churches. We are also doing a few committees to assist you in elections. We are also meeting leaders, mm -hmm. county leaders, uh, national leaders, uh, chiefs, and because we want peaceful election. Yes. So we are trying also to, to, to work together with them mm -hmm. so that we can at, at least tell our people to register. Mm -hmm. In all these functions, one of the things we tell our people is that it is all right. Whether it's not me, you might even vote for my company. Mm -hmm. But it is your right to elect a leader of your choice. And you cannot do that without a voting card. It's true. Without a voting card, yes. And still on the same, Diego, you ascribe to the Hustler Nation narrative. And mm -hmm. uh, you'll be seeking a seat via Kenya, Kenya Kwanzaa. Yes. If at all they would, uh, they would actually yes. uh, uh, do a one single party mm -hmm. ticket. But looking at uh, since the earthquake, it's a few weeks since the earthquake, yes. where Musalia Mudavadi and a ANC leader and Ford Kenya leader yeah. uh, joined forces with mm. the UDA leader who is the deputy president. Mm. And they have torn apart what the government has been doing for the last 10 years. Are they being honest and sincere? Looking at uh, somebody like ANC leader Musalia Mudavadi, talking about the government in which the DP is still the deputy president, and he has and has been in that government since 2013. All the, all the, all the bad things that are being mentioned that the government has done or hasn't done, and we still have the deputy president in that bandwagon. 
Ben and Rezi, when you in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. uh, all of us are aware that uh, after 2017 elections, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. the deputy president was uh, sent mm -hmm. It's in the pub. Everyone knows actually. And um, after he was sent right, of course, some of the duties were taken to one of the ministers. I don't have to go to details. Mm -hmm. And then they were they followed up with an handshake. And uh, uh, when the deputy president was going to talk about the government project, he was told you are tanga tangaling. And then they said, let us tanga tanga. Mm -hmm. So from that time uh, to date, there has not been a good relationship between the two main principles of, of Njubiri. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, the, what handshake did, it was a, its own form of earthquake that time. Mm -hmm. And so, it, it, your earthquake must be counter. <laughs> so that it was the first earthquake. Yes, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. So, you have to counter that with another handshake. And I'm, I'm happy the way the NDP indent um, are, are taking on uh, Musari and Mudavandi. Mm -hmm. Both of them are culprits of uh, former Premier. Do you believe they are adding any, 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 any substance to the, to the new alliance? Yes. Yes, that's a big alliance. Mundavandi is big in Western. Mm -hmm. Nobody can cheat you that Mundavandi is not big in Western. Mm -hmm. Especially when they are together with uh, uh, these other... Wetangula. Wetangula. Yes. Those are big forces in Western. Mm -hmm. and, and it's it has brought panic mm -hmm. on the other side of our alliance. Mm -hmm. And I can assure you, my brother, mm -hmm that uh, many people will be joining uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance mm -hmm. because the majority of Kenyans are afraid, especially politicians, that if I join them now, I'll be taken to court, I'll be done <laughs> this, and finally you might even lose yes. um, uh, going through the law that uh, you are con convicted on this and that, so you are not eligible to, <coughs> to go for the elections. Okay. So majority of Kenyans are coming on bond mm -hmm. on Kenya Kwanzaa. And I'm urging Kenyans that uh, they should rent the minds of the lenders. First. Yeah, they should rent the minds of the lenders. Because if you look at uh, what, what Mosaria was speaking the other day, he was saying that we have worked with this man. I mean, they've worked with the Raira. Kalonzo has worked with the Raira. The, the, the DP, uh, His Excellency, the Deputy President Ruto, has worked with the Raira. He has cheated them. Mm -hmm. If you can even betray a mm -hmm. friend that comes and swears you in mm -hmm. as a people's president, mm -hmm. And you cannot even let that man back to Kenya. <laughs> I mean, it, you become a liar. Uh, seasonal liar. Yes. We, we are saying. And uh, mm. uh, we can touch on the president. Mm. Uh, he is still the yes. president and he's still mm. the leader of the party. That is the ruling party. That is Jubilee. And he did talk about... Okay, yesterday, yeah. he said something that uh, show all the indications on where he is leaning or his presidential a presidential candidate is mm -hmm. and also we saw last week when they met with jubilee mps at state house he said the party is still firmly intact it's just that we have been on the ground working and he said that he's still going to be uh, the the jubilee party leader, uh, party leader. Mm -hmm. and he's still the patron mm -hmm. of uh, mount kenya mm -hmm. your take on that okay uh thank you very much ben i want to say that uh the season that we are having of politics is very interesting. More so when I try to think of it from an economic perspective, I'm trying to look at it and I'm seeing that uh, the president, so far, if I'm genuine on economic analysis, mm -hmm. tell you what, people don't realize about economics. Mm -hmm. President Kenyatta actually has done more economically than Mwai Kibaki did. Really? The problem is, mm -hmm. the way you look at economics is very dynamic. Some of these people think that economics, and as people have been trained, mm -hmm. especially by some people, mm -hmm. it's just about giving people money. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. economics of a country mm -hmm. that is developing, there is what is called short-term mm -hmm. sacrifices for long-term gains. These are the things that we have been questioning. What did Malaysia do? What did mm -hmm. Singapore do? What did Japan do? Go and read the Doge plan of mm -hmm. Japan. When it was in its implementation stage, those people were facing serious crisis. Mm -hmm. The citizens themselves had to make sacrifices for their posterity. It is very interesting that uh, there are people who are preaching right now mm -hmm. about the satisfaction of today mm -hmm. without the thought of the country tomorrow. Okay. Back to what okay. the president has said. Yes. We want to say this, In a that the president himself is very clear. Mm -hmm. The reason as to why he has plunged himself into this, mm -hmm. he has a legacy to protect. Yeah. That legacy cannot be just given to anybody. That is why he's saying mm -hmm. there is a preferred somebody in his own yes. opinion going to who can be able to secure that legacy. Yes. One minute, mm -hmm. kindly. Oh boy.
No, uh, I'm not very good at commenting <laughs> matters of politics. Yes. I mean, uh, I, I have a lot of fidelity to the law. But uh, after all is said and done, uh, I, I think largely it is our responsibility as citizens yes. to, to consciously choose our leaders. Mm -hmm. Of course, we will not run away from the fact that uh, we, we have our politics uh, centered on our tribal linings, mm -hmm. which is not a bad thing. I mean, yeah. tribes, tribes are not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a good thing to be a Kikuyu. It's, an it's a good thing. Yeah. Yes, it's an identity. In any event, we should strive for, for these uh, tribes to be one of our strengths, not our weaknesses. Mm -hmm. we, we should not be pushed to, to violence because uh, we, we have sharp divisions or sharp opinions mm -hmm. of the leaders that we have. Ultimately, after all is said and done, we have a country that uh, will outlive all of us. Yes. So let us protect it, not only for ourselves, but, but, for, but for the future generations that will come. Diego, wrap it up. Yeah, uh, uh, President, uh, you know, President is a symbol of unity. And uh, his legacy actually will be much better if he leaves Kenya to choose their own leaders. Without mentioning anyone? Without mentioning anyone. He has okay. worked out his 10 years. Uh -huh. He is a good man. I like him. He has done a lot of projects. So let him leave Kenyans to elect their leaders. Because as a symbol of unity, when you start now telling Kenyans this is not a good person, this is not a bad person, that is not the, 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 the will of our people. Mm -hmm. They don't need to be told who to choose. Mm -hmm. And that is democracy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any last word as, as we wind up when it comes to uh, the, 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 the hate speech that we are seeing? Unfortunately, we are out of time. <laughs> yeah, seen, uh, I will actually request Kenyans. I, I will actually request Kenyans yes. to do peaceful elections. Mm -hmm. And they choose the leader that you see is going to help the need that you have as a community, as a society, as a people. Yes. And let us avoid violence and, and the ones that can bring up to violence. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, that is uh, Diego Ngoke Wilson, uh, who is a governance uh, and uh, also an expert in matters marketing. He's also be seeking a seat in Daraka, the, the famous Daraka Nidhi that uh, yeah. has so many votes. Uh, we have uh, Wamboi Shadrak, who is an advocate of the High Court. Thank you so much That's for right. even clearing on the Office of the Ombudsman. Mm -hmm. We'll be following it up to know exactly what happens. And also we have a political economist, uh, who is Mike Mongai. Thank, Thank you so you. much for joining us. Of course, in the second hour, you're looking at about matters uh, healthcare when it comes to matters cancer. And the head of state, any moment now, he will be uh, launching or opening the Coast General Referral Hospital Cancer center which you will be inaugurating today which will start actually started working on Friday when uh, it was the world cancer day we'll have a lot in the second hour on matters health universal health care and cancer thank you for watching this first hour don't go away